So I started learning about the timeline of humanity, how humans evolved, and these stages, which tools we did use, which challenges we face, and in which stage do we find ourselves today as civilization, and what is the next milestone we have to, to conquer, and if we don't conquer it, what will happen to us? All of these things seem to be predictable, um, but it still was not enough. Something for me was missed. If all this system was true, then we should be able to explain things that we could not understand before from ancient cultures. So I started looking for those things. Um, the Vikings were known for being good navigators. And they have this symbol of three triangles together. Actually, it's another way of this nine gone, the system of nine dots. So archaeology thought that it was just a geometrical design for decoration. Uh, they were explained that there was a tool for them for navigation, but they say, well, it's not possible because they call it the Nordic Star. And actually, yeah, the Nordic Star is in the north, we know, we use it for navigation. All the stars around are spinning, so it's the best reference to navigate a ship, a vessel. But it's only one star. And this symbol has actually three. So that means there is no correlation. And archaeologists thought about that for hundreds of years and explorers you know this is only a geometrical design it's just not important but recently we got the Hubble right so we could zoom stars from these uh, very nice telescopes that are traveling among the space and stars and we discovered that the Nordic star is actually a ternary system we don't see it from here but there are three stars together there so then you have to explain yourself how the Vikings knew this. And this explains only one possibility, right? You say, okay, it's just a coincidence. But it isn't a coincidence. In this system of nine uh, codes, if we uh, use pure geometry connecting the lines of the codes and overlapping different systems of codes, we, we get a kind of net, a map, a pattern. And this pattern has a center. If you consider that center, the center of the Nordic star, and you look around the different uh, crossing points of the lines, intersections, you can see that there is a star constellation, the Big Dipper. It's very important because for navigation, that's the spoon that travels around the Nordic star like a, like a watch, you know, around the star, and that indicates you where in the time of the year you are. Yeah. So how is possible that I find that geometry traveling around the center of this geometric structure? That was a navigation tool. So it was discovered, it was there, it was pure geometry. So my wonder was how did the Vikings knew about this? Because that is a very precise and complex knowledge of uh, cosmology how the, the Egyptians knew about the same geometry. The geometry, the proportions that are in this Nigon are also in the pyramid. And all the, the mechanics and the geometries of the pyramid are there. And you will find the same principles in all big archaeological sites. With this geometry, the nine codes represent nature principles. And when you connect them with specific patterns, uh, these codes start turning around the year, so around the sun, cycle of the year, these codes start spinning around. So that means if you create a pattern with a geometry, this pattern is going to turn around. And if I connect these codes with a pattern, I can arrive to a limited number of patterns of possibilities. But when I look into the pattern, for my surprise, there was the uh, symbols used for ancient astrology in this code. There were uh, alphabet from Chinese, from Hebraic, from the different cultures. You find the key letters into this pattern. And I thought, yeah, that's a bit too much, you know, to think that that's how it is. But when I start looking at, at the geometry of the symbols from astrology, and I learn a bit about how astrology is. Astrological sign passed through four stages. 
So the properties of the sign, the archetype of the sign, will mutate from one stage to the next one. And normally, in astrology, they will tell that it's the influence of the stars. Uh, but actually, apparently, it's not that. They told the other side of the story. There is a correlation with star's position, but actually is a geometrical pattern. Uh, the archetype principles are changing along seasons in your life. And these principles are described by this geometry. So if you, start, if you study that geometry, you understand how the archetype behavior change. And that behavior, that description, you will find in the modern astrology and in the ancient astrology. For that, you don't need to see the stars. You just need to look at the mathematics behind. So when you associate the codes and the archetypes, you find the information. And for me, that was terrible. I was completely shocked because I didn't want to step into astrology. That was the last thing I wanted to do. But apparently I had uh, many elements solved, you know. Uh, in the ancient times, the people that used this knowledge will probably not communicate it fully, but only to some that will understand the meta meaning and will understand the mathematics and will be applied in many different places. So there are many theories that can come out of that, how this ancient knowledge was transferred and how it arrived to different places. And one theory is that the Vikings brought it to any place. Uh, but yeah, I have probably four or five theories about it. Mm -hmm.